Hello, I'm Emmy Ann Love, certified eating psychology coach and owner of Blissfully Healthy Wellness Coaching. And I'm so excited that you're here today. I would love to answer any questions you have about Blissfully Healthy Coaching and specifically the upcoming small group that we'll be doing here soon to see if it's a good fit for you. Most importantly, I hope that you can take away some answers to why emotionally eating happens, why all those diets have failed, um, and what's actually are some of those true solutions that can help. It is not hopeless. You are in the right place if you've tried every diet under the sun and emotionally eating, stress eating, overeating just seems to be something that sabotages those good intentions. So let's jump in and talk about um, what all of this is. And I have uh, some answers for you today. So who am I? Real quickly, we'll just, I'd love to introduce myself as um, some of you may not know who I am. So I'm the owner of Blissfully Healthy, as I shared, since 2013 um, and certified eating psychology coach. I've had five years of experience as a program director and a center director for a major weight loss corporation. Um, three years as a youth counselor for at-risk youth. And I have a lot of certifications also um, in motivational er interviewing, which is a counseling style. I love to help my clients to be able to um, tap into their own intrinsic and internal motivations so they can learn how to get and stay motivated with a healthy lifestyle. So um, you are here today because you are ready to overcome emotional eating, and I'm really glad that you're here. So what we're going to be talking about today is I'd love to share with you um, an easy tool that you can use right away to be able to learn what to do in the midst of an emotional eating situation, as well as how um, emotional eating can start and why it happens. Um, and really learn the mindset that you'll need to release emotional eating. And then also we'll talk about coaching options because um, some of you are here because you really want to learn about different coaching options and what Blissfully Healthy Coaching looks like. So we'll definitely have um, some time to be able to talk about that for those who want to learn more. Okay, so you are in the right place and this upcoming January group that we're gonna be starting, this next small group that we're gonna be doing is um, if you've just tried every diet under the sun, um, you're tired of the inner battle with food. I have a lot of women that shared with me, it just feels like this constant inner battle to eat this food or not and just white knuckling it constantly. And that is not the way we wanna be living our lives. Um, if you want to learn how to get and stay motivated and really learn what it's going to take to help you stop the overeating, but also with helping you get the results that you want in life. Um, one of the sayings that I have that I like to share with my clients is that what affects your food affects your whole life and your whole life affects your food. So that's why here in Blissfully Healthy Land um, is the term I like to say, we, everything is on the table for what we wanna be talking about um, because what affects your food affects everything else in your life. Um, and so we wanna take a look at all of those, but give you emotional coping strategies, tools, and what to do when in the midst of just wanting to emotionally eat, like what is it that you do? And if you are here, and you want to ditch the dieting for good, <coughs> excuse me, um, then you are in the right place. So this is about not dieting. This is about doing what's the most loving thing you can do for yourself. So if you are sick of dieting, you wanna be healthy in the inside, emotionally, as well as physically. And you're, most importantly, is you're really ready to give up the all or nothing and that diet mentality, you're in the right place. I'm your girl. Okay, so a little bit about my story is um, I did struggle with my own weight for many years, specifically emotionally eating, and I got to a point where I um, was 50 pounds heavier than where I'm at right now, and weight is just a side effect for healing emotional eating. Diets absolutely only have like the 98% success rate. And so when we say success, is there um, an immediate response with like losing weight? Yeah, absolutely. Diets work in that capacity. But if you go two years out, 
98% of diets fail when you look two years out. And so I would love to just invite you that if you've gone that route, let's try something different. And so that's what I had to do. I decided that after decades of dieting and just feeling de just um, feeling depressed about my weight, my body, and hating my life um, as far as how I couldn't control food, um, hating myself, my body, um, I decided I wanted to get out of that miserable, miserable cycle. And I really discovered that having that diet mentality and expecting a diet to fix what was going on the inside would never work as long as there were, was emotionally eating at play. And so after healing emotional eating and going through that process as a side effect, I've released 50 pounds and have kept that off. And this is about healing those old hurts and becoming aware of how to use emotional tools to navigate through life because we need them. Life happens. Um, I've also been a speaker um, and um, I've definitely done some big things that have been really fun and a keynote speaker as well a few times. Uh, but I love talking to women and empowering them. Um, and this talk can also be helpful for men as well. The vast majority of the people I work with really are women and the small groups that I do, they're also specifically tailored for women. Um, so it's a safe place to talk. I am a single mom of three. I'm a full-time college student also right now. Um, so I love working with clients in a group format because it allows me to continue doing what I love to do. Um, but I also am able to really help women have even better results when we do it together as a group and we walk through this process and we have the accountability. So if you're here and you're thinking, okay, this all sounds good, tell me more. Um, let's talk a little bit about the struggle with food. The biggest thing I hope that you take away from our time together today, from watching this recording, this video, is I hope you know that it's not you. You have not failed the diets. The diets have failed you because it's not about willpower. If there's emotional eating at play, stress eating, just any overeating at play, it's not about willpower. In fact, that can make it worse when we're trying to just white knuckle it. It's also not about knowledge. So most people know that eating more vegetables and moving our body more will most likely get us closer to where we wanna be. That's how we live more of a healthy life. Um, and we also know that eating fast food every day and binging on sugary things and carby things and fatty things is probably not gonna get us closer to being the happiest, healthiest us that we can possibly be. And so that's why it's really not a knowledge issue when it comes to overcoming the battle with food and also as a side effect, releasing weight. It needs to come from the internal. So one thing that I've learned after in my own personal journey and in doing this for almost 14 years now is that dieting is more harmful than helpful for anybody who has any type of emotional eating, especially if there is this all or nothing diet mentality um, that will always lead to a binge diet binge cycle. So for emotional eaters, we have to learn to emotional coping tools to be able to even implement any sound nutrition. And in fact, any sound nutritional program, um, nutritional guidance, will end up being a diet in a obsessive dieters mindset. It was for me, any nutritional guidance. So that's why we need to work on healing the mind and then we can also heal the body. When we talk about our relationship with food and why we might emotionally eat or why we may overeat, uh, we wanna take a look at different things. And so in the Living Blissfully Healthy program that I've created, we look at all of these things. We look at physical, is it some adrenal stress, uh, dehydration, blood sugar management, are we getting enough sleep, food sensitivities and physical pain? Or is it gonna be more of that emotional side? So the feeling of I deserve it, uh, stress, deprivation, disconnection, coping, relationships. So we look at every area in life and so we can help you discover what are those missing pieces? Why am I emotionally eating? Is it physiological 
or is it psychological and emotional? And we wanna figure that out and sometimes it can be both. And so we wanna look at that and come up with your custom solution. So let's talk about this whole emotional eating thing. What is this emotional eating thing? I've had a lot of clients that I've worked with over the years that say, you know, I'm not an emotional eater, I just like food. And that might be the case. But anytime that we eat food, uh, to the point where um, we're not comfortable or um, we're eating for more than just a common pleasure, but really we're eating for a sense of uh, joy or for a sense of escape or numbing out, uh, we definitely want to take a look at that and get curious and see if any of these types of emotional eating can be at play. So one of the fun things I like to do is I like to take concepts and make them um, break them down. And so let's talk about the nine types of emotional eating. This is just something that I've come up with to help name what type of emotional eating might be going on. And so as we go through these, if you're noticing that you might have one of them, five of them, all nine of them, no worries. It is okay. It's just awareness. It's going to help you say, oh, is this going on for me? because we first have to be aware of the problem to then come up with a solution. So let's check this out together. So as we go through this, you can just think, is this me? Do I notice that I might do this, okay? So the first one is the bored eater. When you eat, you eat because you are bored or trying to soothe the feeling of boredom. The grazing eater, this is happening a lot during this time uh, that we're going through as a country right now with the pandemic. Um, people are at home a lot more, so they're bored eating. And the next one is also happening a lot, which is the grazing eater. And this is when you find yourself grazing and picking at food all day long. Maybe you go back to the kitchen in the cupboard often, um, and maybe it's too, uh, too numb out or just to stifle an underlining chronic sense of anxiety or fear. And so, with the pandemic and all of the unknown, um, there's a lot more people who are noticing that they're overeating or they're turning to food because it's quick. And you know what, it works at least in the moment to help us feel better. Um, so this might be happening because of un all of the unknown definitely creates a lot of anxiety and fear in our country right now. Uh, the procrastinating eater, you might eat something in a way to say, I'm too busy right now. Um, and so eating something, it helps to procrastinate from putting the effort in and avoiding whatever feeling or emotion doing that task might trigger. A few more here is the screw it eater. So when you feel like you are fed up and frustrated from a situation, a long day at home with the kiddos, or maybe you've been so good on your diet, but you just feel it over emotional and frustrated, you might throw your hands up in the air and say, ah, oh, screw it. And you find yourself eating anything that doesn't fight back and it's not nailed down. The nightcap eater, this is when you eat um, at night uh, and you find yourself going back to the refrigerator, but it doesn't seem to, this type of eating doesn't, you may not find it much until maybe you turn the TV on um, or you sit in bed and then all of a sudden you find yourself having this hankering for food. Um, so the nightcap eater, really what's involved in that, it can be like emotional stress from the day and finally relaxing into it. Um, or it could be kind of to try to numb out some of those feelings that have been going throughout through the day. But regardless, if you find yourself going to the refrigerator all night long and it really starts in the evening, that's the nightcap eating. The I deserve it eater. This can be if you've been working really hard all day long and you find yourself that maybe I deserved to eat this. I worked out really hard today or I've been great on my diet. I've been good on my diet, so I deserve to have a little cheat day. So this, what, what kind of eating can come into play here? The last supper eater. Well, I'm gonna start my new diet in January or in April or on Monday. And so, you know, I'll just eat anything that's not nailed down and doesn't fight back now. And then before I start my new diet again on Monday or in January. The secret eater, 
This is when maybe you're home alone um, or you are alone driving home from work and you might go by your favorite fast food restaurant and hide the evidence before you get home, hide the receipts or even pay with cash as when some clients have mentioned so it doesn't come up on the bank statements. Um, the secret eater can also happen when um, moms are home alone finally and maybe the kids are out or husband's out and they find themselves when they're alone they tend to eat more. I've had a lot of clients over the years mention that so that can happen um, but mostly what this one's about is the hiding of the behavior of eating um, and secret eating that can come with a lot of shame for a lot of the clients that I've worked with and I would love to just help take the shame out of this. Um, we all overeat or emotionally eat at some point. The goal is that we're not, it's not, the goal is not to never emotionally eat again or overeat or stress eat. The goal is to no longer use food on a daily basis or on a regular basis to try to cope with our emotions um, and that we emotionally eat less, so less to the point where maybe you may not even remember the last time you emotionally ate or overeat or stress ate. And that's where we wanna get to. That's where food freedom is. The rebel eater, you notice that once you tell yourself that you can't have a food on your new diet, all of a sudden you have a huge craving for that food, even though you may not have had any desire for that food in months. You crave the foods you deprive yourself of. Or you may even think, mm, I can't have it. Well, watch me. So the rebel eater is uh, the ninth one. So how many do you have? Are you noticing any of your eating behaviors with any of these, a few of these, or all of these? If you're noticing that you have some of these, you are a great, great uh, candidate for the Living Blissfully Healthy program. I just want you to know you're not alone in it. It is okay. So let's talk about why emotionally eating happens. We talked about the different types. So now let's talk about why it happens. One of those things, as we talked about already, is that 98% of diets fail. And a lot of times, dieting is a huge reason why emotionally eating happens in the first place. It actually exacerbates the emotional eating. So let's see why. So I'm going to give you an example. It's kind of an extreme example, but I've actually had clients have an example like this. Um, and so as we go through this, just kind of notice like what resonates with me? Is this me or do I see myself in the story and what doesn't? So let's just say January comes or actually, uh, yeah, January comes and we're just thinking, oh, I'm going to Hawaii at the end of January and I'm just really excited. And so this time I'm really going to do it. I'm going to lose 30 pounds in 30 days and I get this gung ho feeling and this time I'm really going to do it. It's this amped up false high. So then I start restricting my food. I go out and I buy all the food. I get the menu. I do everything. And I start to just follow the menu perfectly and measure everything out and journal it in my cute phone app. And I'm just really hyper focused on that, almost obsessed about what I'm going to eat. And I can't have anything off of it. Even if my nine-year-old daughter comes up and says, mommy, I made cookies. Would you like some? No, I'm not going to eat any cookies because it would take me off my diet. That's how strong that sense of like, I got to stay on track can be. Um, and then some deprivation comes in a few days, but you're feeling kind of my high and mighty because I lost a couple of pounds already. This is working. I'm doing it still gung ho, but you're starting to kind of white knuckle it because some of those cravings are coming in to emotionally eat because we've taken that food away that normally would help to soothe and numb out the feelings throughout the day. And I don't have any coping tools emotionally to handle the stress without food. And so we're just really white knuckling it and we're using willpower at this point. And then I'm starting to feel more deprived and craving. And then finally, I see a chocolate chip cookie that my daughter made and a couple of them and I finally just scarf them all down. And then I'm feeling guilty. And the reason it led to eating them all is because I have one, maybe even one bite of the first one. And I think, oh, I screwed up. I screwed up, I was doing so well. Oh, I'm never gonna be able to figure this out. I was doing so great for seven days and now I just can't stop. And so once I have one, I can't stop, I eat them all. 
and I feel guilty. And then I think, well, I'll just start again on Monday. So I might as well just eat anything and everything that's not nailed down and doesn't fight back. And I'll start again on Monday or, you know, January 1st, if this is another time of year. So this is just a common diet cycle. It is why diets do not work, especially for emotional eaters. It actually does so much more harm. It's, it's the deprivation that can lead to emotional eating. So I hope that is a helpful tool to really see why diets are more harmful than helpful. Dieting tells you what you can and you can't eat. And that right there creates that restriction and it can trigger that rebel eating, that perfectionism. And then leads to that all or nothing. And so I have to do it all. I gotta do it all and I gotta do it all right now. And if I don't, I'm gonna feel like a failure. I am a failure. And that's a really difficult place to be because it's not like we're never gonna have pizza again. It's not like we're never gonna have chocolate again. It's not like we're never gonna have wine or whatever else we may have as a bad food. But the more that we do that, the more we're kept in a battle with food and we want you to have that food freedom. So there's no way to really be perfect when it comes to food. And when we tell ourselves that I'm bad if I eat this food or I'm off track, I ate bad, those types of things, it really internalizes to I am bad. And that's no help and that's not helpful at all because then that can bring up emotions. And guess what? For an emotional eater, we're gonna turn to food to try to numb that out and it keeps the cycle going. So dieting compares you to others and their standards of success. So other people follow this menu and lose weight and can stay on track, why can't I? That comparison really, as that famous quote says, comparison is the thief of joy. So we can always find somebody that's better than us, prettier than us, thinner than us, taller than us, you know, darker hair than us, blonder hair than us, anything like that. Um, so dieting restriction causes the emotional eating and the weight gain. So the answer really needs to be to stop the dieting. So when we have that diet mentality, here are some of the symptoms crave forbidden food, consumed about food, stressed about weight, avoid social gatherings to not be tempted by food, order um, over exercising, obsessive calorie counting, obsessive weighing up and down emotions based on the scale, feel tired, feel irritable, hangry, yeah. Weight loss followed by gaining it back plus some and just downright feeling miserable. So the reactions to being free of the food restrictions are just feeling more hopeful and comfortable, interested in changing, more willingness, enjoying life more due to not being obsessed about food and exercise or body image. Uh, food feel, becomes less interesting. These are literally things that my clients have said. The food is not as much of a lure to me anymore. I would have normally turned to overeating due to this, but I didn't this time. Less emotional eating healthy weight loss, keeping it off, feeling open and feeling accepted, engaged, better able to change, feel understood, feel safe, feel empowered and relief. And that is what the Living Blissfully Healthy program is all about. So if you're feeling like you're understanding and you're ready to let go of the diet mentality, what does, the, what does healthy living look like if we're not dieting? And a lot of clients I've worked with, it feels like jumping off a cliff to expect to just stop dieting. Like, how do you even go through life if I'm not on this roller coaster of being on a diet and then failing it and binging and being on a diet and restricting and binging? Like, it doesn't seem like there's anything in the middle. But it's that dieting that keeps that pendulum swinging to, I gotta be perfect. I'm gonna do it all and I'm gonna do it all right now and I gotta do it perfectly. And then one failure, it swings it all the way to the other one where it just says, first, screw it, screw it eating, right? I deserve it eating. I'm going to eat it all right now until making myself sick that I never want it again. And when I start my new diet in January or new, new way of new dieting on Monday. And so what we want to do is get off that roller coaster and learn how to live in the middle where the pendulum is going to swing a little bit and that's okay but it's not going back and forth this way because this 
back and forth, that's how we lose weight. We restrict, we overeat, then gain all the weight back, maybe plus some. We restrict, we lose the weight, gain it back, plus some, right? So we're, gain, we're dieting our way up the scale, and that is what I did for decades. And I saw thousands of people go through the weight loss program that I was a program director and a center director for, and I saw what worked and I didn't, what didn't work. And over the last seven years, I have perfected the Living Blissfully Healthy program so that it is a 12 weeks to jumpstart your mindset, create some new healthy habits and help you finally break free from emotional eating and the inner battle with food so that you can if needed, release the weight and finally keep it off. I want to make sure that you know that this program is not about weight loss, although it is a common side effect for a lot of women. So the focus will not be weight loss, but it will be focused on learning emotional coping tools so you know what to do when you are emotionally eating or you want to emotionally eating, eat, and um, we can stop it in its tracks. This program also helps you so that you actually crave to eat healthy foods, to build new healthy habits, and you want to do that. So it's not about willpower, it's about willingness. And it's about inspiring that intrinsic willingness so that you do these types of changes, create new healthy habits, and you're able to stick with them. We get to the root of the problem. So, um, in this program, there are eight modules that we're going to walk through together. And this program starts um, and it is a group program. When we do things together in a group, we have more accountability, more support. You get to hear about other people's struggles and successes. So you know you're not alone and just have that camaraderie and that support you will have access to the entire Living Blissfully Healthy program, which is 12 modules. And these are pre-recorded uh, with to help you walk through the workbook that's associated. And I give you all the concepts that will help you break free from emotional eating and kick emotional eating to the curb, as well as the diet mentality. Um, in addition, you'll get a one hour weekly group Zoom session with me. Um, it's actually per week, so that's an, that's an error there. So that is per week, and you'll have a safe and secure Facebook page as well, so you can connect with other women. And you can engage in that as little or as much as you want. So Wednesday nights was when we're going to be doing this. Um, Wednesday nights between 6.30 and 7. I haven't decided on exactly the time I want to do a poll to see what works best for people. Um, so just be thinking 6.30 or 7. And it will be starting the first Wednesday in January to kick off the new year with a new mindset. So this next year in 2021, let's leave it behind and start a new mindset so you can be the happiest, healthy you from the inside out. Um, and it's going to give you all those tools so that you can stick with healthy eating, stick with moving your body. That's going to be something you can sustain. Um, and that way you can release weight if it is meant to happen for you as a side effect of it, but not that main focus. Okay. Um, so I would love to invite you to be part of this. If you're feeling like I would love to join this and you want to learn more, um, you're invited to have a personal, uh, just free chat with me, a discovery session, so we can see if you're a good fit for this group. It's 12 weeks. I do ask the clients that decide to join to be committed to the group um, because when we join a group, we're not just joining for ourselves. That is the main reason, but we're also there to to be committed to the other members and to show up for live for Zoom calls. It's about showing up in the Facebook page and supporting each other. It's a safe place for you to share what's positive, what's negative, the struggles. We want to hear it all, the good, the bad, the ugly, and I will be there to support you along the way. You'll also get a one um, private session with me a month, and then you get the weekly groom session, so it's actually correct. That is good. I didn't make a mistake. Yay, but mistakes are okay. <laughs> so you get a one hour session with me a month. And what that does is it tell it, we're gonna be able to work on your own personal struggles and help you to have breakthrough. Because sometimes some of the things that drive emotional eating can be old stuff. They can be old injuries, um, emotional attachments um, to food and drinks like Coke and, um, and we wanna help you have your personal breakthrough with that. So I can lead you through some additional tools 
and just really be able to hold space for you to work through some of that as in addition to working in the group and um, as well as working um, with your workbook. So everything you need to really break free from emotional eating and it is four installments of 225 per month. And if you need to make other arrangements, we can definitely come up with other ideas to make it affordable for you. It is only open for 12 uh, women to join this because I do want to keep it small and intimate. Um, I love that type of work and just really helping everybody have the support they need along the way. So if you would like to join, please reach out to me here. This is the link where you can get on my calendar to schedule a free 25 minute private discovery session with me at no cost. So if you are interested in joining the group, maybe you have more questions, um, maybe you wanna talk about a payment plan that's, per, that's personal to you. We can make up to 12 monthly installments if you wanna break it up to that. I don't want money to be something that keeps you from getting the help that you deserve. Um, so we can talk about a personal plan if you'd like, or in some clients like to pay it all at one time as well um, to just have that taken care of. So please schedule that with me. I would love to connect with you. I hope that today was helpful and I hope that you got some things taken away that you can use that has answered why emotional eating happens. You've got a tool to understand the cycle of dieting and ask yourself, what type of emotional eating might be at play. That is another tool that I was able to share with you today. So it has absolutely been my pleasure. And if I can be a resource to you, please don't feel free to, feel free to reach out. And until we chat again, I invite you to stop dieting and start living a blissfully healthy life. I'll look forward to connecting with you. Bye.